Fantastic Riders, welcome to Tash TV. So, so, so excited to have you with me. Um, I'm actually recording this on Thursday. Happy Thursday. Um, but you guys will get it tomorrow um, because tomorrow is Good Friday. So, happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter. It is so exciting. Are you guys like excited about Easter like I am? It is my absolute favourite holiday. Um, nothing gets me more excited about Sunday morning and I just run into the kitchen. Um, my husband's so beautiful and so wonderful and he knows how how, how my favourite Easter goes and that's when I come in, I have a sleep in and then I come running into the kitchen and he's got the entire... Um, you know where you sit, the kitchen table set up with all our Easter stuff and we have eggs and toast and hot cross buns and then we have a basket. And in that basket goes Easter eggs and normally if um, it doesn't have at least five kilos in it, um, I'm pretty much cranky. So he told me it's, it's going to be a good one this, this year. So hopefully, fingers crossed over 10 kilos and we're all happy. But I really wish for you to have an amazing Easter, have an amazing four days. Um, enjoy spending time with your friends and family or if you're riding, you know, have, have fun being with your horse and maybe you've got a bit of extra time with those four days to work on your 90 day goals for the next quarter. So get into it, love it. Okay. Um, for this episode, um, there was a question last week about how to develop confidence in your writing, and I, I was when I was answering it, I was thinking, oh, okay, should I, should I, you know, go into it further? And I just recorded something. I know, a second ago, um, and I just said to Kate, it's really not working because the minute I kind of started going into it, I was already recording for half an hour, and um, that doesn't serve you um, because I really wasn't even into it yet. So I can give you the surface answers, but the surface answers don't really help you, so I don't really want to waste your time and my time from watching it. Does that kind of make sense? So. Um, Definitely do everything I said. It, like that is the surface answer. How to develop more confidence? Well, obviously get more education. Just do it. All those kinds of things that I said. If there's an actual issue um, that there is fear of getting on a horse, or you know, when anytime there's fear involved, and depending on how involved it is, it does require more work. You know, when I, when I work with a client um, who has fear or has has developed a loss of confidence, I will. Do you know they, they either have to do my program or I can teach them over two days how to you know work through that, or I do a whole lot of sneaky NLP tricks and confuse their unconscious so they actually don't know how to do the fear strategy anymore. So um, that's that's if you're wondering where that answer is, it's um, I've written articles. If you go to the website, there's a couple more articles on it. Um, otherwise, you know if if it is really an issue for you, um, contact us and we'll see if we can help. Um, so today's question comes from Naomi and uh, the question just related to me, hopefully I can remember it, is um, how do you get a really, really beautiful trot to canter transition? Um, from my understanding, Naomi's getting either trot, so she's saying canter but the horse is just trot, 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 trot trotting, probably faster, or um, the horse is leaping into canter or he's going a bit crooked. So let's look at that. Okay, so um, trot hand to transition. Firstly, everything that we talked about with the sitting trot, so it's, it's really about your seat. Um, I always ask canter from a sitting trot, even if it's a young horse, I'll, you know, sit for three or four strides and then ask for the canter. So um, the, the transition has to come from your seat. Um, it comes from your inside seat bone. Um, I call it like scooping forward or pushing forward. Um, uh, so in sitting trot, you've got your two seat bones on the horse, kind of pedaling left, right, left, right, left, right, sit, 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 sit. And then when you're cantering, just that inside seat bone goes and canter and off you go. And obviously as your inside seat bone scoops forward, that naturally means that your inside leg is on and your outside leg is slightly back so you can kind of use your legs. But I don't really use my legs too much or my aids too much in regards to that. It's just my seat. It's just my horse knows my trot seat and my horse knows my canter seat. And obviously the young horses have to learn that and figure out, okay, well, I don't know what, what that means. They, when I change my seat, they don't know what means canter. So obviously I use leg then or even a, a little touch with the whip to say, hey, I mean go. Um, but then when they understand that, I back up my aids, back up my aids until it just comes off the seat aid. So, um, first thing, if your horse is trot, 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 trotting, the first, the, the worst thing that you can do is go trot, 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 canter. Because then you've taught them the transition trot to canter is five steps faster trot than canter. And that's not what the transition is. So if ever I ask for something and the horse doesn't give it, I straight away come back to trot. I don't chase it. 
because if I keep chasing it and keep doing it, then the horse always thinks, oh, okay, that's how transitions are done. There's trot, there's fast trot, and then there's canter. Or I was working with walk canters with Lucy the other day, and she was going walk to one even, and she's got just one step trot canter. I said, but that's not the transition. <laughs> the transition is walk canter, and the transition is canter walk. You have to be very, very clear and very, very specific about what it is. Otherwise, you just confuse the horse, because the horse goes, oh, okay, so what we're doing is canter, one step trot walk. And then when you get to it, then you change the rules on the horse, and the horse is like, whoa, I thought we had it going. What the hell's going on? <laughs> so when you're doing trot canter, make sure it's trot, trot, like it's you're sitting, so I go trot, 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 canter. And it really, really helps to have a countdown. I do it with the young horses so I know that you know that I'm gonna ask at the right time. So I'll go trot, three, two, one, canter. Or three, two, one, pop. And at that one, and at, you know, at that pop or at that canter, bam, the canter stride has to come through. And if it hasn't, whoa, 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 back to trot, back to trot. Whatever they're running, you know, if they're, they've gone into this, you know, the chook run trot or whatever they've done, cool, cool, come back to trot, we're going to do that again because you actually didn't get it. So that's my first tip. Don't, don't run into it. Just stop, back to trot, collect, half halt, half halt, get them listening to you, sit, 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 three, two, one, pop. Um, the second thing is, um, I think you said that he was getting a bit crooked. So um, they can get crooked if we're holding too much in front. If we're like, oh, okay, um, you know, then they're just like, oh, well, I can't go anywhere, I can't go anywhere, so I'm gonna have to put my quarters in or my quarters out. Yes, they need to be straight. Yes, they need to be in the outside rein and they need to be soft to the inside. If your horse is kind of sitting on the inside rein and heavy on the inside shoulder, they're gonna get the wrong leg because it's always gonna be the, the, the leg that's free to come through that shoulder that's going to canter. So to make sure you get the right leg, you've got to have them in the outside rein. You have to have weight on the outside shoulder so the inside shoulder is free to come through. Um, so with crookedness, yeah, just make sure they're traveling forward into a light hand, you know, into the, that you're not holding them, that they're just traveling into this nice trot, really soft, really nice, really, you know, la la la. So you can just go trot, 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 scoop. If, if the trot isn't right, don't canter. Um, you know, I, I, I just, sometimes I walk on horses for a whole hour because I just go, well, I can't, like every time I go to trot, I lose it. So I need to fix, I'm, they need to feel good in walk before I go up and they need to feel good in trot before I go up to canter. Otherwise, I'm, it's just going to get worse because it's quicker, faster and it's quicker and, and the horse needs to use themselves more. So, um, yeah, make sure your trot's good. And if that means that you don't ask for canter for a week or a month, okay. Whatever, like they know can't, and you can do it on the laundry. You can do it, but you know, it, 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 you want to get really, really clear and specific. What are you training? Are you training canter? Then I don't care how you get into canter, just canter because you're training canter. And on a young horse, I definitely don't demand that they have to do a perfect trot canter transition to canter. I'm just like, woohoo! We're in canter! Yay for us! You know, on a really, really young one. And then, of course, then we start bring in more skill, go, okay, well, it has to be better. So be really, really clear in, in what your outcome is. If you're training trot canter transition, I don't care if you don't canter that session. If, you've never, if the trot never feels good enough and if you never get a good transition to canter, then you don't canter. Because th th you know, otherwise you're not teaching anything. You're just, you're just going, oh, okay, well, I have to canter and then you do a bad one. So specific, clear outcome. You want to have a good trot canter transition, then that's what you're working. Cool. Ooh, got my gur on. Did I get my gur on? Nah. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, then the next question was, oh, he leaps into it. Okay, so if you're getting, so if you're going chop, 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 canter, and the horse is going, whoo, like insane, jump, 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 or forward, 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 that's a good thing. Like, I, I like forward responses. Forward responses are yay. Um, so, I mean, if he's leaping, it might be also holding too much in front. You've really got to have them soft. That, 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 that there's nothing blocking in front. You know, you want them to you want them to go forward. So let them go forward and let them come through. Um, and yeah, if it's a little bit forward, okay. Especially if they're young. All right, cool, good forward response back to trot canter. I bore my horse silly when I'm teaching this and making them really really good for the prelim tests. I'll do 50 in a session. I know, I don't have a life. Um, <laughs> and I might do, when I say 50, I might only do one, but I will do 50 attempts at it. So I'll go trot, 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 
and ask for the canter and go, no, nah, it hasn't happened, back to trot. So all you'll see is the horse trotting, going a little bit faster and then back to a normal trot. You'll go, I wonder what you did. You might not even see it, but to me, and that was me training a transition, going, oh, about to do it, no, nah, pull out, not gonna be good enough, it's gotta be better, it's gotta be better. Um, yeah, so, so I'm trusting that all helps you and gives you a bit more clarity on, on what I'm thinking and how to train your trot canters better. Um, the other part to the question was how do you keep the horse cantering in canter? Um, so again, we talked about the canter seat. So the canter seat is the inside seat bone and the stamp or, uh, down through your ankle um, on the first stride. Not the first stride, the, the one. So the canter is a three beat, a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And there's a stamp on the one, 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 one. When you're trotting, there's a stamp of one, two, one, two, one, two. Clicking. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so you, you, you can't just say is in that rhythm. It is, you know, telling the horse you come with me. I'm not saying that's perfect. Young horses can still fall out of it. Um, but it's basically, firstly, don't let the horse um, kind of hold you. Like my horses really, really try and train me just as much as I train them. And they're like, Mom, I've got this great idea. Why don't you keep your legs on like all the time and then I'll keep cantering. And, and I find myself doing it. I go, are you sneaky? Take my legs off, the horse stops. I go, come on, it's called self-carriage. And so off you go, you canter again. You've got to be able to take those legs off and the horse stays in canter. Okay, stays in canter through your seat and the horse is forward thinking that he's forward, you know, basically saying, okay, mum, I'm going to stay like this until you tell me something else, until you give me a trot aid, until you give me an extended canter aid, whatever it is. The horse must go alone. The horse has to, you know, be forward and, and off it goes. So to keep it in canter, legs off. If he goes back into trot, even if touched with the whip, come on canter so off they go again and they learn to that they're going to get you know a kick or a touch with the whip if they suck back come on and not stay forward and, and trot no they have to stay in canter they ought to be thinking forward and they have to be thinking forward and going forward on their own can you tell I, I train that all the time and, and it's a challenge sometimes because you know I train Frisians and Frisians go oh really do it like really or do you, did you not mean that <laughs> you know they kind of go wouldn't it be a cool idea if we walked <laughs> and I'm like I wouldn't it be a cool idea if we just galloped no it's not like that I love training my boys but you know there is that element of going okay no you've got to stay forward without me without me you know if you if you suck back and you don't keep this forward momentum because trust me when you get to Grand Prix if you've got to keep the horse forward as well as go sideways and do a slime change and keep the bend and keep the energy and keep the submission and keep the oh my god it's going to be too tired, too tired. So you've got to teach them when they're young to stay forward, to keep the energy and to do all of that without you. So I trust that helped Naomi. Have an absolutely amazing Easter. Have fun playing with it and have fun everybody. And I look forward to seeing you next week.